Discerning a voc vocation can be a daunting task, but the staff at Vocation Placement have helped thousands of individuals since 2001. And today we learn about the process from the founder of Vocations Placement, Natalie Smith. Natalie, thanks so much for joining us from. Yeah, there you are, in warm Florida. So yes, pass the suntan lotion. <laughs> oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. No, no, you were not. Well, this will be a very quick interview now. Well, thank you, Natalie, for no. So, well, first of all, you love Valentine's Day, though, right? I do, because it's all about love, and God is love, and it's, it's uh, not a lot of fanfare, it's not expensive, and it's all about love, and I love it. Yay! So, <laughs> so, is, so is Jay in trouble? <laughs> yeah, am I in trouble uh, with my... No, I understand his point of view, and uh, I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, you've come up with a vocational discernment process. Tell us what made you decide to develop this helpful resource and, and write books about the topic. Well, we have actually two sites. We have vocationsplacement.org and testyourcalling.org. And I'm a convert from the Pentecostal religion, so I was on fire for Jesus. <laughs> and um, when I, um, I once was praying as a Pentecostal and I said, I love you so much, I just want to eat you. I said that to Jesus in prayer. And somebody said to me, that's what the Catholics believe. <laughs> and, but when I became a Catholic, when I felt the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist so tangibly, mm -hmm. um, I, and I saw the consecrated people, the priests and the nuns, I knew that it was possible to bring the kingdom of God to earth as Jesus asked us to do in the Our Father when he said, uh, thy kingdom come on the earth. And so it was shocking at just how real uh, we were able to do that through the sacraments and through living the single consecrated life. Um, I wanted to bring the kingdom here. I was so happy to see it. It was like being on a very long journey and then suddenly seeing uh, um, the land of Oz. Mm -hmm. the time I became Catholic, I always wanted to tell everyone about the priesthood. It was very odd because... Uh, there was really no logical explanation. Uh, but then uh, I was a marketing person by trade, uh, and I, I, there was a point of experience where the Lord um, revealed to me that I was going to found a national vocations placement ministry, and the joy that flooded into my heart, I felt like the Blessed Mother, uh, you know, when she had her Annunciation. Uh, but uh, the reason I bring that up is that there is a huge element of surprise in vocation. Mm -hmm. The Lord will surprise you. And what happened to me as the founder of Vocations Placement Ministry, what happened to Mary, is the same thing that will happen to everyone if they just trust the Lord. Yeah, and one, one of the vocations, uh, of course, is marriage. And we've been talking about this the last day of National Marriage Week as well. And I was wondering if... Uh, and I know a lot of people that are engaged or, or uh, you know, are with somebody, they're thinking to themselves, do you, uh, do you have uh, some way that they can figure out if this is the right person for them? Yeah, there we do give a lot of marriage resources because we're not, we don't try to get people to be monks, nuns, priests, or, or single in the world, or married. We, we, we highly recommend looking objectively at all the vocations. Understand what holy matrimony is. Understand what single in the world is. We have resources for all of them. Understand what, just be open and don't be defensive. And how do you know who to marry? We have a whole book. <laughs> called the promised land of vocation that goes into great detail how to know what are the signs because we have really literally observed over 30,000 people discern so you do know uh, you know what is the difference between a friendship and a romantic relationship or an attraction and a call to holy matrimony this is the big you know a lot of the confusion at times how do you know uh, what is from the Lord and what's just a, a, an attraction, a physical attraction, it, and nothing more. So it's hard to see. Uh, and that's all in the book, The Promised Land of Vocation. <laughs> well, one of the hardest parts of discerning a vocation is to determine if what you want is true and authentic. Uh, do you have a way to identify that? Because St. Bernard said that the desires are the down payment for that desire to be received. 
Uh, but then always comes into question, well, how do I know which desires are from the Lord and which ones aren't? It always comes down to that. And the answer is um, the same that Jesus gave. You'll know it by its fruit. You know, that's what it's like at the end of the day. You just sort of have to be focused. When I decided to be single in the world, for instance, I'm single in the world permanently. Uh, and when I decided to do that, the reason I did is I looked at the fruit. I noticed that when I was in this vocation that this freed me up to fly to Jesus. And if you're called to be in holy matrimony, it's liberating, it's freeing. It allows you to, to grow and to bloom or to be a priest or to be a nun. So the first person you save in your vocation is you. So you look at what effect is your decisions having on you? Because if you're called to be uh, in a vocation, you're gonna feel a, a sense of being stabilized. If you're going in the wrong direction, even though it might look good to others, you will have a sense of being neutralized. You'll f have a sense of rather than spurring you on, it sort of makes you feel content in a way that's sort of sluggish. Oh, so where can people learn more about this process? Testyourcalling.org, you can take a test. It was invented by Jesuits. Uh, and you get a free analysis of your gifts, testyourcalling.org, and also uh, vocationsplacement.org. You fill out the application, we send you a menu of places, but uh, you have to actually visit the communities and uh, before you know if it's for you or not. We always say you don't know until you go, because it's just <laughs> like dating. You know, you sort of have to meet people. Uh, if you never date, you're never going to get married. So, uh, and always have a sense of moving forward. You don't want to have a sense of sort of being in a rut, if that helps people. Mm -hmm. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for being with us today and, and sharing all the good work that you're doing. And, and enjoy the warm weather down there. <laughs> oh, I will. And, you know, it's coming your way soon. Oh, I like that attitude. <laughs> there you go. Have Thanks, a great Natalie. day. Thank you again. Thanks.